हेलो 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 यस मैम आई कैन हियर यू Good morning, everyone. I welcome all the participants for the third day international webinar for the first session today. I feel extremely honored to introduce an enthusiastic speaker for the session, Dr. Prashant Motwani. He received his PhD in civil structural engineering from IIT Bombay with over a dozen peer-reviewed journal and conference papers. Specialized in smart sensing materials with part inventorship of a smart self sensing bfrp bar dr prashant is a commonwealth alumnus with experience of working as research associate in uk for a period of 12 months for development of smart frp bars with embedded fiber optic sensors his research interest is in the field of cognitive infrastructure management using iot based sensor in the past Dr Prashant has worked on several structural inspection and monitoring projects using advanced instrumentation techniques currently he is the chief of technical marketing ctm for singapore based structural health monitoring company novus private limited that manufactures advanced wireless sensors for structural health monitoring dr motwani has rich experience in structural audits inspection retrofitting and monitoring using advanced instrumentation techniques currently sir is post doctoral candidate at iit bombay for the development of iot based cognitive infrastructure management cim system for infrastructure assets sir is also an excellent motivational speaker at tedx youth some of the speeches given by sir are how i became more sensitive towards life at 18 why i choose academics over being a bully and few others we are very grateful to dr prashant motwani sir for accepting our invitation and marking his presence here i now invite him to enlighten the participants with a talk thank you so much sir uh thank you so much lakshmi for such a uh, nice introduction i am audible to everybody right yes sir you are audible, audible. great so uh that's that's actually pretty nice i didn't knew you had all that information uh, of my uh, history right from the pre academics to post academics so i believe i have how much time uh, 90 minutes so what i'm going to do is 45 to 50 minutes 50 minutes right no problem so uh, this is i prefer this to be more like an interactive session rather than a one way communication so i can see the audience right there uh, on my screen which is wonderful and i'd be glad to stop midway and take questions or if you want to shift it at the last that's also fine but let it be an interaction session i'm not here today to throw all the knowledge towards you which i have learned in the past 10 years because it's going to be an indefinite task to do to deliver all of those information in this 15 minutes so i'd rather use only few information and keep the uh, platform open for discussion so that being said and just as um, i have already mentioned i i graduated from iit bombay with a phd one year back and now i've joined the company novus which is a sensor manufacturing company today our focus would be to see how a new domain of uh, structural health monitoring using wireless sensors can facilitate in some of uh, very very important solutions that can be offered uh, using this technique of shm so allow me to please share my uh, presentation So I hope the screen is visible to everybody. If anybody just could 
speak up and let me know if it's visible. Can you see the screen, uh, Lakshmi? Yes, sir. So we can okay. see. Okay. So uh, what I'll do is I'll jump directly into the introduction slide and I'll tell you what are the issues that are being faced currently in the industry. And uh, you, you must have heard a lot of collapses in the past. For example, the uh, Kolkata Machirat Bridge, then uh, in Mumbai, uh, which medium of communication is good? Hindi, English, mix, which, which you guys prefer the most? Can the audience speak up, sir? Or they have been muted? Sir, uh, English is better, sir. Okay, English is better. Fine. So, uh, so I was telling that there are many structures that you would be very surprised to know that the reason for being that for their collapse. So, for example, uh, you see this sandboard. Sanvodan River Bridge in Goa that was actually shut down by the government and uh, people rushed into the bridge, a shut down bridge to see an alleged suicide, which because of overloading collapsed. Similarly, there was an audit done on a Mumbai footover bridge only recently before it finally collapsed while the occupants were on the bridge. So the audit proved it to be completely safe and yet it collapsed. And what the people call such collapses is typically an act of God. But I personally believe there is no act of God. There's always and always a manual, a human error that because of negligence, such structures have collapsed. That brings me to the topic that I'm here today to discuss with you guys is structural health monitoring. Now, how do you, how do you uh, see your body is similar how you see a structure. Just like your body has a uh, brain and then it has nerves that connects all of your hands and legs. So whenever you touch a very hot uh, uh, vessel, you immediately remove your hand. That's because from your hand, the, the nerves have sent a signal to your brain for your body to react on that stimulant. Similarly, structural health monitoring consists of a central brain, which is in our terminology, we call it as a gateway. And it has multiple uh, cables, which here in your body are the nerves. And then finally, the touch points that is experiencing that stimulant, which is in our SHM term are known as sensors. So your human body is nothing but an SHM system that reacts to the different stimulants. Now, this stimulants could be heat. This stimulant could be uh, sharp uh, light on your eyes that forces you to close your eyes. Similarly, in SHM, you have strain, you have acceleration, you have deflection, which we'll see one by one. So what now that once, see, what I believe is anything uh, when you're studying also in your classroom, it's very important to first learn it on a very, very basic level. For example, the theory of relativity. I'm sorry, I might go off track and on track because I, I personally believe the teaching has to be very, very uh, start from a very, very basic. So that's a, maybe, pardon me if I go off track sometimes. But how do you learn the theory of relativity? I don't know if you have heard this, but this is a very, very good way of learning theory of relativity is imagine you are sitting next to a beautiful girl. Imagine your boy or if your girl is just vice versa. Imagine a boy and you're sitting next to a very beautiful girl. And you have, you're sitting there for two hours. But the two hours went by and it hardly feels like there were seconds of time that went by, right? And at the same time, you're listening to this lecture, which is although a 15 minutes lecture, but it might at the end seem like a forever lecture. So that is theory of relativity. Similarly, I'm trying to teach you your SHA. The very basic way is to understand it like a human body, how it works. But if you want to understand it technically, the definition is right there on the screen, which I'll just read it for you. 
SHM is a process of implementing a damage detection and characterization strategy for engineering structures using real-time data accumulated from sensors to the structure. All of that basically means what I've just explained to you in a very simple manner. Now, what does SHM does? It helps in improved understanding of field structural behavior. It helps in detecting damages at a very, very early stage of the problem. It reduces inspection and repair time, encourages the use of innovative materials. Why? Because when you're using innovative materials like FRP or any sort of uh, material that is not available in the code, you're still not sure of its complete history. And SHM through those sensors will give you real time information from those new materials that will finally help you understand it better and design it better. That's why SHM can also be a good uh, solution for innovative materials. It helps to develop a rational management and maintenance strategies and reduce the repair cost. Now we have understood what is SHM. I hope we have understood, but if you have any questions, Raise your hand and we'll, we'll discuss. We'll stop the presentation and we'll discuss. But if you allow me to move further. Now, uh, this slide may be a little off again, but I'll, what I wanted to show you is the government, although this kind of SHM uh, techniques are very famous worldwide, in India, there are still certain uh, constraints to implement such technologies. The reason being is not known. It's not very well known. The benefits is not very well known. But in the recent Lok Sabha committee, it was actually pointed out that there are 37,689 bridges in India that are 100 years or older. Now you, um, I, I believe so you all are civil engineers and you know that a bridge is designed for typically 100 years, while buildings are designed for 50 years. Beyond 100 years, nobody is responsible if the bridge collapse. Because your structural design engineer has certified that the bridge is going to survive for 100 years with certain reliability factor. Now, imagine almost 40,000 bridges in India, which are 100 years older. And what are your solutions? And even to add to that, the uh, inspection strategies, which again, I believe, so you already know the conventional inspection strategies of performing NDT, UPV, and core cutting are adopted across all the bridges, irrespective of its age. Now, can you tell me when you go to a doctor and you know, you have, if you have, if you have a sneezing problem, the doctor treats you differently. And if you have say, uh, you know, fever, he will treat you differently. But imagine the doctor, no matter what is your situation, what is your symptoms, they it treats you the similar way. It's what's happening right now in, in, in our industry where a bridge in respect of its age is immediately inspected through the same conventional techniques, which is not going to uh, give you the real scenario. That's when the railways finally identified SHM as the technique to monitor such old bridges. And the RDSO, which is basically the research and development wing of railways have put in Konkan railways to use such technologies in India. So that's something that is good. And I'm hoping that this is going to move further. So I request more and more uh, students to take up this topic and learn more about it. And there will be huge opportunities in the future. So as I was telling you that there is a conventional way, which is known as structural audit, which I believe so you must have uh, started studying also in your curriculum. Uh, I hate this one-way communication. I'd love to hear from you guys, but uh, you, you know, there are, there are structural audits, uh, techniques like NDT using the bound hammer, or then there is UP. How those are different, how those are different from your uh, structural health monitor. So this is a brief comparison of the two techniques. While both Audits and uh, advanced audit, which I'm categorizing here as periodic SHM and continuous SHM, gives you the health of the structure. Uh, gives you the health of the structure, but the difference between a conventional audit and an advanced audit is that the conventional audit gives you at present health. What is the health right now? 
Whereas the advance audit gives you in service and while the structure is being put to use under occupancy, how it is, is behaving is going to come out from advance audits or also known as SHM. The distress, what is current, what has happened already will be determined by the conventional audits. Whereas the propagation of distress or the prediction of distress even before it occurs can be predicted with this SHM. The duration of test for an uh, conventional audit is instantaneous, while this could be either intermittent or a periodic or continuous. The cost obviously is more economical and sometimes the long-term SHM becomes slightly expensive because it's going to continuously monitor the health of that structure without any disruption. What is the type of test? It's a semi-destructive or non-destructive, while SHM is a purely non-destructive test. The different instrumentations used in advanced conventional audits are rebound hammer, UPV, rebar scanner, carbonation, etc. Whereas in this case, we use uh, instrumentations like accelerometers, tilt meters, corrosion sensors, crack, deter, crack uh, uh, meters, like those kind of sensors. Don't worry, we are going to take up more detail depending on how much time we will have, or maybe I'll request. Uh, Assignment to have a second round of uh, discussions later, but I'm going to go very slow, I'm not going to rush anywhere. And uh, I want you guys to at least get some information from this lecture rather than just giving you a lot of information here. Okay, so since I am uh, a company employee, I'm supposed to give you this information. So, our company, Novus, is a Singapore registered company. We are a manufacturer of wireless sensors, which precisely deals with structural health monitoring. Our solution uh, involves starting from SHM consultancy, basically meaning to identify the location of sensors, to supply of these sensors, to install these sensors, to monitor the data from the sensors, and also maintain these sensors throughout their life while they are being commissioned on the structure. Uh, give me one second, huh? just one second. Sorry, so uh, my, my colleague has just joined me. So he's start with laptop. So as I was telling that uh, our company is dealing with more and more wireless sensors and uh, uh, monitoring and installation, the benefits, which the sensors also I'm going to show in this lecture, depending on the time, uh, are wireless. They have an inbuilt battery. As you can see in the screen here, there is a wild, there's a lithium ion battery inside these uh, sensors. The precision is one micro strain. They're easy to install, means they're self-adhesive. They have a 3M tape at the back. So this is one such sensor uh, that you can see. It has a 3M tape inside it. So this uh, 3M tape, you can just peel it off and install it like shown over here. And that's the sensor being installed on a steel plate. Uh, so that's a strain sensor. That's a tilt sensor. That's a water level indicator. Then we have uh, deflection sensors. We have accelerometers. We have anemometers. And then there is a gateway that basically I was telling is the brain that takes up all the information from these sensors and uploads it to the cloud. Now, when you go to SHM in the market, there are two kinds of technologies, rather three kinds of technologies, but I'm restricting my discussion to two. Uh, there are two kinds of technologies that are available in uh, in the market for performing SHM. The one is the wireless monitoring systems that Novus is currently offering, while there is another system known as the conventional wired system. Uh, I don't know how much of you have uh, seen in your laboratories, if you have done any testing with strain gauges, once you install the strain gauge, that uh, the lead wires, what we call it, has to come all the way and connect it to a central logging system. Now that central logging system could be HBMs, it could be national instrument, and then and then from that uh, instrument, it has to then go through an Ethernet cable to your laptop or a workstation. 
So all of those wires is what I'm calling is the conventional wire, wired system or CWS. Whereas what we have offered here is a completely wireless system right from the sensor to the gateway and then to your laptop. There are no bus cables or lead wires anywhere while the data is being transmitted. So what is the difference between these two is shown in this slide. So it's a sensor to screen solution with no wires, complete wireless transmission, while the CWS technology is actually a complex wired network, which is okay for the laboratory testing, but becomes very difficult when you have to do it at site, right? Because at site, you will have so much of uh, variables involved. There will be so much of connections that will be required, multiple sensors. That makes it very difficult for a real-time continuous data to be recorded using such conventional techniques. The sensors that we have here is actually uh, having a battery inside it. Uh, I'll show you in the further slides. We open this cap and then there's a lithium ion battery inside it. This can work for 10 years, depending on the sampling. So you don't have to even reach out to the sensor to replace the batteries for almost 10 years of duration. And as I said, they are self-adhesive. They have a 3M tape at the back, but they can also be bolted right here. So this is what I have here as a tilt sensor. So you can bolt it directly and they are IP65 protected means weatherproof, rainproof, whatever the structure can uh, sustain, the sensors can sustain as well. They have a working temperature uh, ranging from minus 40 to plus 65. So whether it is deployed at Kanyakumari or Kashmir, it would survive those temperatures. And they have a high accuracy of one micro strain and tilt of 0 0.001 degrees. Now, what I'll do now immediately is I hope I've given you some basic information on how, uh, what is SHM and a brief, you know, uh, information about it. But what I'm going to immediately show now is a platform where you will be able to visualize how the data is coming. So give me a second. I'm going to exit my uh, screen sharing mode. Perhaps I can just Good, I'm getting questions here. So, height is interview. Yeah, I'll do that. Sorry. SHM is carried even for commercial steel buildings as well. Yes, I'll get to that. Before I do that, uh, I'm going to show you uh, some of real time information coming. So, this is a platform right now. And what I have here is a sensor there. Yeah, the bottom is the sensor. So what I have here is a sensor, if you can see, right? That's uh, 15032958. There's a code at the back, if you can see. And uh, you can see there is no data. And I hope you can see the screen as well. The sensor is now being visible on the screen. What I'm going to do is hopefully it should start in, yeah. So right now you can see the time over there it's 10 22 which i believe is the time in bangalore as well so 10 22 immediately this sensor has started transmitting information to my software using a usb device here so i've just connected a usb device that's basically a dongle that is sending a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz to this sensor and this sensor is synchronized at again 2.4 gigahertz. So they are speaking at an unlicensed frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. This is the radio frequency that they are using to transmit data from this sensor to the screen right away. Now, the moment I twist, uh, say, the set, this is a sensing element. So the, imagine this is being installed and it has sustained some stresses. You can see an immediate jump there on the screen. 
that's a real time information being sent directly to my laptop about the disturbances received by this sensing element through a wireless frequency of 2.4 gigahertz i hope you guys got what i wanted to show you it's a demonstration that i wanted to give you about real time data being sent now its application is huge you call for steel structures i i can say for i'll show you depending on the time again we have a lot of applications of such technologies that could actually not just save infrastructure assets but lives i hope you will agree with me that recent uh, the devgar ropeway was the now i don't know if i should go into that but it's alleged that that has that has caused because of a sudden collapse of two uh, you know the, the the two trams the two trams i i don't i don't believe so such kind of errors could happen fortnight it has to be an accumulated deformation of those ropes which have sustained that movement for years it can it could have suffered some kind of corrosion abrasion or wear and tear some some signs just again i like to take it again to your human body you know a uh, heart attack also doesn't happen overnight it is an accumulation of the stress in your heart that is because of certain i don't know eating habits or uh, un unhealthy uh, factors such as smoking or drinking that leads leads to heart attack the same with the structure suddenly doesn't collapse it is never supposed to collapse it is designed with so much of precision so much of uh, factors that it cannot happen overnight so such technology in which we are actively real time monitoring that structure will give us some sign of distress that can lead to prevention of not just the loss of infrastructure asset but also lives so i'm sorry i i feel too much connected with such technology so i go into too detail there sometimes but what next i wanted to show you here is the system now you're not going to live live monitor this 24/7 you're not going to sit in front of the laptop and see the data coming in your screen and jumping that means it has to directly go to the cloud and the cloud should be able to give me notifications on my text or email right so i'll show you what i'll do is right now i'm logging into a demo account i'm logging into a bridge in hyderabad which has in, which has such sensors installed and there's a gateway being kept at site uh what i'm going to do here is i'm going in remote mode and uh, immediately when i go to remote mode i see all of these sensors being installed on that structure now i suppose i select a uh, strain gauge and i want to go back to say february 1st to say march 1st i i have my fe model imagine i have uh, done some investigation uh, where i have developed a model of that bridge and i know what kind of loading has come right you must have done projects and tech projects or vtech projects where you have modeled in stad or etabs or a backus and you know that that structure is supposed to have this much strain for this much loading agree at least you know sh shake your hands or uh, or your uh, or your head so that i know you understand so next time we must have a uh what to let's have it fine so i believe so you must have done some modeling and you know there is an expected strain information now that can be compared directly with the real information now with the click of one button what i'm doing is i'm speaking to the cloud the cloud is speaking to the gateway and now i should have okay let me try one more time so suppose i want to tilt in from february 1st 21 to march 21 yeah so i i i have it here so right from february 1st 2020 Well, in the noon to March first at around eleven p.m., I have all of the tilt information of one month, which is varying between fifty-five point nine degrees to fifty-five point five degrees. So that's marginal. That's point four degrees of variation coming from that tilt sensor. Now the location and everything I'm not showing it here, but that image will be available in which you will know the location of the sensor. 
and how much uh, the data is there is right here on the screen. So this I'm showing you while sitting in my affairs, while the sensors are actively recording the data from the structure. Now, another thing that I want to show you is this alert management system. As I mentioned that whenever certain, uh, for example, up, when you when you cast concrete, when you put it to use, you have designed it for an allowable strain value, right? You have your concrete allowable strain value of 2,500, I'm sorry, the breaking strain at 2,500, and then you consider some design factors and say allowable is say 1,000 or 1,200 micro strain. So that's what you're going to give to that sensor. You're going to say in minus 2,000 and plus 2,000, and minus 1000 plus 1000 are my thresholds. This is my first threshold and this is my second threshold. As soon as you receive a strain information beyond this threshold value, immediately inform me because then there has to be some issue with the sensor. So that's what we do. We define an alert management system where we define a threshold values and that threshold value will immediately create an alarm on this email ID and also a text that see whatever you have defined has exceeded. Now it's up to you to take further action whether you want to uh, create a response relay on this that it automatically shuts down the bridge, shuts down the system or a manual intervention is being sent. It depends on us, on our uh, understanding. But this much information the sensors will give us. So I hope that is clear. Now let's go back to the presentation. One so is it better now if the screen is visible and the presenter view there's nobody I, I i i don't like to see this because i can't see you guys then yeah. Yeah. Is this okay now? I hope you can still see the full screen, right? Let me know if there's any issue. Okay, so I'll continue here now with a uh, study being done at IIT Bombay, where I'm also involved on the project. What we are doing there is comparing these systems with uh, different uh, technologies. So. In the beginning, I've mentioned to you that there are wired SHM technologies and there are wireless SHM technologies. The third one is right here in front of you. It. It's a fiber optic sensing technology. The, the advantage of fiber optic sensor systems is in its corrosion free nature. Whatever the data is being transmitted here requires some kind of magnetic fields. Thus, if there is too much of uh, too much of interference or too much of waves around, that may cause interference with the data transmission for both wired and wireless. Whereas fiber optic communication is completely through light. It's a source of light that is being sent from this gateway and it goes to the sensor and returns back. So there is no uh, electrical uh, transmission or magnetic transmission happening. So irrespective of the environment, typically when you do it in coastal areas, you are always in a risk of uh, interference or too much of corrosion rather. So in such cases, we use such technology. But at IIT, what we have done, what we are also doing is to compare the wireless system information with a fiber optic sensor information. Just for the, for the, for the brevity, of results, I'm going to quickly go through, not go into too much detail. 
what I, what we, had, we have done there. So that's uh, I have to leave the point presenter. I guess. So this is a short video. What we have done is we have installed a specimen here uh, with all the three system. And initially we have given a free vibration. So that column is really vibrated. And what you see in the screen is the information from the, this is from the fiber optic, which is again in real time. The top one is an accelerometer, whereas the bottom middle one is the strain while the, the bottom most is actually temperature reading, which does not change when you give a free vibration. The next is forced vibration. Uh, in forced vibration, what you see here in the second video is actually the column vibrating by itself. And that is because we have connected it to a shake table and that shake table is making that column, instrumented column to shake automatically. Our, our, our motive, our objective of these two studies, both free and forced, was whether all of these sensors installed with three different technologies are able to capture that real-time information first. And if they are able to capture that, whether they are relatable, it should not be like the system A is giving X value and the system B is giving Y value when the loading is the same loading. So that was our objective. I'm going to show you very briefly and skip to the part where I'm more interested because I believe I have 30 minutes more. This is the three accelerometers. Uh, that's a fiber optic sensor accelerometer, a three axis accelerometer. That's a wired MEMS accelerometer. And then this is uh, the wireless accelerometer. So this is three day of data on 21st of January, 22nd of January, and 23rd of January. On 21st January, between 11 a.m. till 5 p.m., we have pushed the specimen four times in the interval of two hours each. You can see the moment we pushed it, we had a straight line because it's on a very, very long time scale. You just see a line, but when you zoom into it, you will see an actual acceleration curve which starts with a peak and then slowly moves down. And then similarly on the second day, first push, you can see the same information. This is from the fiber optic sensor accelerometers. When we zoomed in further, the information that you can get from these fiber optic sensor accelerometers are frequency of vibration, amplitude of vibration, and time period. So that's what we have found, 0.87 seconds. This is from the conventional wired system, same uh, way it was uh, recorded. This it was installed on the same specimen subject to the same loading. And these are the data coming from those. You can very well see that the time period obtained from the fiber optic sensors and the wired system is similar. Now, the WMS accelerometers, which is this, did not give any results. The reason being is, Whenever these sensors are installed, they do not just capture anything and everything. And that's not what you want, right? You want only specific things to be recorded, which according to you might be critical for the structure. So a small push is, might not be very meaningful. That's why these sensors that we have developed have a inbuilt artificial intelligence that ensures that the data that is recorded is only meaningful and how in simple terms, it is only the data that is recorded, which is kept or which has a certain time period of loading. It cannot be just simple push and the data is recorded because then the batteries are going to consume very fast. They do not have any external supply source. They have to rely on their own battery. So for that reason, we have only created a system in this sensors that Will, it will record the data only when it is maintained for certain duration, which in case of this free vibration 
is 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 nominal is is not that minimum duration so what you see here is 993 to 994 these are nothing but just uh, zero readings these are like 0.4 micro g which is nothing uh you can i'll just skip this trade because our parameters here uh, you have understood what i wanted to show you moving further on the forced acceleration in the forced acceleration we have given a frequency of vibration to the shape table on which the column specimen is installed so the shape table moves and the column moves automatically and again we have given this only twice at morning 10 am and then 4 pm three days as you can see on 7th of february 8th of february and 9th of february two times in a day in the interval of almost 6 hours so that's the acceleration from the fiber optic you zoom into it you see this time it's more it's 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 for a longer duration and then it finally damps up similarly the second day first reading it's for a long we, i think if i recall it right we gave it for 30 seconds so 30 seconds we continuously vibrated the column this time you can see the time period was 0.27 it was uh, the frequency of vibration was 3.6 and the amplitude was 0.06 g this is from the cws that is a conventional vibrating wire system with all wires and you can see similar pattern of vibration and same time period again now this is the fiber op sorry the wireless accelerometers you can see the same pattern as seen in fiber optic and this is the same platform that i've been uh, i've showed you i can any time have dragged this data even today for the test that was done in february i would love to uh, uh, do some test at your institute if if uh, if my fellow colleagues there also are willing to try out these systems so we did it in february and even till today the data is in the cloud so you can always drag it anytime anywhere so you can see the zoomed in image now you have a proper information of accelerations which was not available in free vibration because i mentioned that it was not maintained for a minimum duration you don't want simply a vehicle passing down the bridge to have you know there will be so many vehicles there will be thousands of vehicles passing to the bridge which you don't want to record but you do want to record is a minor earthquake or a, a, a nearby construction activity which is being continuously causing some ground vibrations which are reaching out to the structure your example the best example is your uh, the high speed metro the high speed that metro that is going to come up is going to cause certain to, to the nearby buildings it's going to cause a continuous vibrations while the train is moving so that information you want and that is what it can record the point of observation here is the similar time period from fiber optic so the fiber optic sensor system that is 10 times costlier than the wireless system gives you same reading provided there is no uh you know corrosive environment there's no interference there so that is what i want to show you here and a similar g or uh, peak value of the amplitude has been observed by the wireless system i guess that is what i want to show you about the uh comparison what i'll do is i'll take another 10 minutes not more than that and open the dice for questions is some of the applications because learning a technology is one thing and being able to use it effectively is another you have learned a, a newton second law of motion but if you can't use it if you can't apply it it's 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 garbage am i right so let's see how much time we have depending on that how much applications we could see one by one on these sensors and mind you, most of these applications that I'm going to show you are done by our company. So I was directly involved in, in most of these projects. So vibration sensor. We have already seen how a vibration sensor looks like. I'm not going to go into detail on how they are being built, how they are being made, how they work. But because that, I believe, I leave it for the, for the, for the classroom learnings. What I'm going to show in this is how they can be used. 
So what happened was uh, there was a factory in Shidampur where where an conventional audit was done, and in the conventional audit, it was uh, found that seventy five percent of the columns have deteriorated its strength to fifty percent, and immediately it was required that the columns and beams should go uh, should undergo repair and retrofitting. And in that retrofitting, your uh, cost is huge. So what the client wanted was an advance inspection of a long-term monitoring to realize such uh, deterioration. We installed some of the accelerometers and meters and temperature sensors on the screen. What we observed is, so this is what we got from the sensor. This is a continuous vibrations coming up into the sensor while the building was in use. So the, these, mind you, are not to the external loading, but they are ambient loading, which is nothing but what the structure is being regularly put to use, which was essentially the churning of the milk. The huge machinery was there above this low, which is continuously churning the milk. And that churning of the milk caused vibrations on the slab, which is ultimately being transmitted to beams and columns. And those sensors were requiring that information. We took the peak amplitude vibration and then estimated back calculation. So acceleration can be back calculated to find displacements using this equation. So we back calculated and found that the peak displacement on which the column was vibrating was five micrometers. Now that five micrometer value is very small. Unfortunately, there is no defining factor there where you can actually tell that whether five micron is a danger value or it's a safe value. But what I want to show you here is with these technology, with these advanced inspection, we can monitor the, those small little movements in the column uh, in a long term basis. So this information was for 100 hours, almost three days we recorded that information. So that's a vibration sensor. You, you get a lot of applications in, uh, uh, in fence protection system also, where you can install it in an array with multiple accelerometers. And any movement on your fencing will be immediately recorded by these sensors, which can then be put to an alarm system, which will uh, generate alarms whenever the fencing is being. I believe I have a good video on this. Uh, forget it. Fine. So this video just shows that how the alarm is triggered whenever there is a fence disturbance, which is nothing but in engineering term is kind of an amplitude of vibration recorded by the fences. Next is the inclination sensor. Now, inclinometers, you will, you understand are nothing but the sensors that records inclination. We just saw one of the sensor readings for a one month duration where those inclination of 0.4 degrees was also recorded. Now, we have installed this in some of the bearings the rocker roller bearings, which is just below the deck and above the pier, there's a bearing on which the deck is resting. And that bearing system is, is supposed to transmit uh, any kind of movements, the thermal expansions on the deck effectively to the pier. So they are supposed to rock and roll. That's what they are, that's why they're known as rocker roller bearings. When we install these sensors, they were supposed to monitor continuously the tilts on this rocker roller bearing. But what we observed was the tilts that were coming from the sensor were not up to the expected values from our FE models. That gave us some indication that our thresholds were never exceeded. Our thresholds never got exceeded. But even the coming up values were way lower than what we expected. That means that the tilts will not happen. And if the tilts are not happening, either the sensor is bad or the rocker roller bearing is not moving at all. If the rocker roller bearing is not moving at all, all of those strain is getting accumulated on the slab, which might finally collapse because of the bulging or bending of the slab. What we realized at the site was a completely frozen bearing due to snow. This was this project was done in the US, where this is quite common concept of frozen bearing. We finally removed the bearing, uh, the snow on the bearing with minor repair and maintenance. And immediately after the maintenance, you can see an improved behavior of the bearings. This helps us in basically 
preventing any kind of a serious damage that could have occurred on such bridge. So these are some of the other bearings where you can install such sensors in a steamer bearing. The railways. The railways is another example where you will see quite commonly the, the derailment of the train. And that is because the tracks are not continuously being monitored. These tracks can have some kind of an uneven settlement because of which there is always a chance of derailment until sensors can very well predict the variation in these rail lines. So I can keep on going with a lot many applications. This is one application where we have monitored the strain on the crack, perpendicular to the crack. And uh, after it has been repaired, you can see the photos here. That's the solar power gateway, which collects all the data from this sensor to the gateway. And then from the gateway, it is a perpendicular cloud. We have done some project in India with LNT where we are monitoring the wings of the pier here using our strain sensors. This was the FE model that was utilized to identify the points of measurements. And these you see are the strain sensors. Another application that we are in discussion with Pune Metro is erection monitoring. They have huge segments. This is just one example, but they have huge girders that are being going to be uh, lifted and placed in, in above the piers. There is always a chance that these lifts are not proper. And the strain sensor, which we saw in the beginning, can in real time transmit that information from the girder to the laptop. And any, any problem in the girder lifting or in, in uh, rest, finally, when that is put to rest, we will know with these sensors. Water tank monitoring. This is also quite common when you are not able to go and check visually what is happening on an elevated water tank. We can install sensors around the circumference of the water tank to see if there is any ovality difference when the tanks is being filled or emptied. We can measure the staging uh, inclination and we can also do vibration measurement from these tanks because this is nothing but a one degree of freedom. This is like a single arm and then there is a lump mass at the top, which is going to vibrate in case of an acceleration. So we can have, a, have an acceleration history using these sensors. And the utility tasks, what you see here. Load testing of the bridges. We are going to uh, do a test here on, this is the Anandpura bridge, a new construction that the government authorities want us to test to ensure that the load rating to, to basically identify that how much vehicle load should be allowed on that bridge. So these strain sensors, we are going to use it on the deck to measure the rating factor. Then uh, there is a lot of applications of deflection sensors where we can put it across the cracks to continuously monitor the propagation of these cracks. We are also monitoring the slab deflections in Nirlan in Mumbai for a long-term basis. At the same time, these deflection sensors can be installed for movement of the bearings again and the expansion joint movements. Another application that we are right now going to perform with these sensors is pre-stress monitoring. So you understand if you have learned pre-stress, there is, there is a phenomenon known as loss in pre-stress. And that loss in pre-stress is essentially because of, of reasons such as relaxation, creep of concrete or creep of steel. So all of those results in the loss of stress of strand. And if that loss is significant, then it basically means that you have nothing but a reinforcing bar inside concrete. And then your entire design assumptions changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to install a load cell right here in between the anchor head and the anchor plate. That load cell will be connected to our wireless node that is again going to be connected to our IIT platform to monitor the change in the loads from those precess cables in real time. Similarly, if you are aware of the retrofitting concept of pre-stress laminates, they are going to install laminates across this crack that has occurred in their bottom segment due to over, over pre-stressing. They're going to put this pre-stress laminate and then they're going to stretch it from here so that basically these two anchors will cause a pre-compression and that pre-compression will close the crack. It's 
very important that the pre-stress laminate continues to maintain that pre-tension. Otherwise, that crack will wide up open again. So we are going to monitor that strain information on those pre-stress laminates here with our wireless strain sensors shown here. This is a very good example be it that we are right now in development. I'll just take five more minutes. Uh, you know that we can install a tilt sensor that can monitor the tilt of the collar. But do you know why that tilt happens? I believe so. You guys are aware of the concept of erosion that happens below water level at the ground, the seabed. So because of those waves, the soil here keeps getting eroded. And if that gets, keeps getting eroded, your pier is susceptible to tilt. Now that tilt can record tilting when the pier has started to tilt. But we as a company believe in going back to the problem rather than, you know, the problem when it has occurred to give you a solution. So the problem occurs because of erosion. We have our water level indicators like this. Sorry, the DAR sensors, the distance sensors that goes all the way below water and that sends a UV light that measures this distance. Now, if this, this distance, if it increases, means the soil below is starting to erode. So that gives an indication, indication that the erosion has started occurring and now the pier tilting is inevitable. So first, we have to immediately go and rectify that erosion problem. That's another sensor that we, we have available in our bucket. And then we have the water level sensor, which you guys are aware. Again, they can be used to predict floods. They, they determine, they can, they're installed on the deck of the bridge. And this is the level of water. So that distance of uh, uh, water level can be determined. Uh, basically, this is what I'm telling you. So this is a sensor and this is the water level. Whenever the water level rises, that distance will be predicted and will be sent in real time. And immediately when the threshold limit has exceeded, we'll get an alarm that the, the bridge is going to over flood, either shut down the bridge or take immediate action. You know, if you don't, if you, I don't know if you know or not, I read a newspaper in a few years back that there was a bridge, it was completely dark and the bridge was collapsed. The first bus went down, the, the bus fell down into river, nobody knew. Second bus fell down and then nobody knew. There was three bus accidents because nobody even knew that the bridge has collapsed. That kind of uh, ignorance we have in our day-to-day uh, -day lives that I believe, that's the reason such technologies could have actually help us in if not completely Dr. avoid. Prashad, yes, sir. You can, you can take another five minutes. Uh, yes, I'm almost in the conclusion slide. Okay, okay, go ahead. Uh, we are at the final uh, product, which is the smart FRP bar which is uh, with embedded sensors. As you can see here, there is a fiber optic going inside the protrusion line. And finally, the product outcome is a smart FRP bar that is not just a construction material, but also a monitoring sensor. So I'll show you this. Finally, all of those sensors are uh, send, sending data to a single platform. That's the wireless gateway here, which has an inbuilt SIM card here. And that sends all the data that is accumulated by the gateway to the cloud. Our platform that we have already seen will, the entire system, I'll give you an overview. So from the sensors, the data goes to the gateway, which is also installed at the structure. The data goes from the gateway to the cloud, which is a central server in Singapore. From the cloud, you can take the data anywhere in your office using a single USB license, a USB device that has the license key. Now you will have this software to change the sampling from the sensors to analyze the data, to create alerts, and export and compare the data with the design software. Once you have the data here, you can and if you find any unusual information from the sensors, you can communicate it to the client server or connect it to their own uh, central uh, logging system. So for example, if it's railway, it's going to be their traffic system. You can intimate the traffic signals to go red if we have observed some kind of 
unusual information in real time from these sensors. And then if needed, the, 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 the same can be, uh, can be ordered for a manual intervention to check if that location is perfectly fine enough. Now, whether this is one structure, it could be any structures, and all of that could be controlled from a single server room, wherever with the sensors are being installed. With this, I'll drop my mics and I'll open the tags for questions. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have got some information from the lecture. Thanks a lot. Uh, over to you, Professor. So, thank you, Roman, Dr. Motuani, for an excellent uh, presentation followed with the practical demonstration. Now it's a question answer session. First, we'll ask the students to have the questions. Yeah. Then we'll take the questions from the chat. Sure. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Hi. Actually, basically, my question is that uh, uh, firstly, you uh, mentioned that structural health monitoring uh, uh, can be implemented in uh, railway bridges. Uh, so, uh, basically, my question is that. Uh, we have to collect the real-time data uh, from the sensors connected to the railway bridges. Uh, I have two questions related to that. First question is that how to uh, how to know the location of the sensor, and the second question is that how to make sure that the huge data, that is the real-time data collected from the sensors, are kept secure. Uh, the data security is equally important uh, when we are sensing uh, the information. So, so that was my doubts. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot for that question. So I'll try to answer it very briefly. The first question you ask is the location of the sensors. So typically that's where the first uh, service is being offered is SHM consultancy. What we do is we either discuss it with the consultant who has designed the bridge, for example, and who knows what are the critical locations typically on the bearings or on the tech center. Say for example, the arch bridge, you know that the arch deflection is going to be the most critical parameter that may suffer or may cause, may, may initiate the deterioration. So in a crux, we generally do a modeling on any finite element software. If the model is not readily available, we ourselves identify the critical locations depending on the structure type, the structure use, and the construction materials being used, and then appropriately such as the sensor location. So that's the answer to the first question. The second is the data security. Obviously, we ensure that our entire system is within a firewall. Without this USB device, nobody can access that data. Even though you can hack into the system in between the sensor to the gateway, but those all information are encrypted, and you will be only able to accurately uh, convert those information into meaningful data through our license key only. And that license key, again, even if you have the license key, if you must have noticed when we started the demonstration, there was an account username and password visible on the screen, which I entered and then logged into the Hyderabad bridge. So that username and password is your security key to safely log in into that structure to access the information. Without that, you are not you will not be able to get that data. I hope that answers both of your questions. Yeah, next question. Sure. Um, good afternoon, sir. So here is my question. How can we apply it and use it in a particular building? Uh, from building, I mean buildings that of immense political importance and are heritage, heritages and monuments with specific interface and organized system. That's again yeah. a very good question. Dr. Dr. Prashant, there's one more question in the chart. Yeah. The smart health monitoring is carried out even for commercial buildings as well. This is the question from Vishal Vishwanath. Uh, sorry, I didn't get the question there. Commercial buildings? Yeah, there is a question from chart. Smart health monitoring is carried out even for commercial steel buildings as well? Question mark. Okay. So I think I'll club both the questions and the question is being how it could be done in buildings, whether steel or concrete. So in buildings, your major parameter of interest is again, what I, I, I identified in the past is your corrosion, your uh, settlement, 
So again, all, all depends on what parameter you are interested in. But what I've typically seen is the deflection monitoring. So you said for heritage structures, we are actually, you have to understand that sometimes you cannot disturb too much of the appearance of an heritage structures. And you know that the repair and restoration would change the appearances. So in such cases, what we have observed in many applications is to monitor those small distress levels. So say, for example, there is a crack, which is a deep white crack. And you know that you have to repair that crack immediately if you want to do a repair and restoration. But what we generally do in such structures is we avoid any kind of repair and restoration. We install such crack meters to monitor that propagation of crack. And before it becomes too much of a problem, we, we basically uh, repair it through just grouting and other means. So there is no code, to be honest, given as such how to do monitoring. But there is all depends on the person to person expertise, how that is being deployed after discussions with the consultant. So there's no code or a predefined methodology for research. Okay, so there is one more question. Sir, is it a LoRa ban? No, my question also on the same conditions because we are working on initiative smart water map system where we are using this uh, sensors with uh, LoRa gateway. And then uh, we are using the TTL server, TTL server, and then the, the communication will be go to uh, our uh, uh, AWS. From AWS, you know, it will go to uh, for analytics part. Is okay. it uh, you are using what kind of a gateway? LoRa van, LoRa enable gateway, or what? I don't think so. I'll be able to answer that question because that's more over an electronics uh, question on how these systems are being developed. But what I understand is the gateway here. So if you see, this is the gateway. And that gateway, how it is being developed, I'm not sure. But that's the patented technology that the company has developed and in which it has an inbuilt IEEE communication with a SIM card that it uses to upload the data to its AWS server in a centralized server in Singapore. OK. I will and get how about the details. The, how about the analytics part? Is it, it will be enabled in a web, mobile? Yeah, so the analytics we saw initially, it is a platform. It's a license, software license that you have to install on your uh, uh, mobile phone or in your laptop. And with that USB device, when you connect, you can get that data into that platform. And from the platform, you can get any type of data into your computer uh, in the form of a CSV or a spreadsheet or values. Digitized numbers, you get it in that directly into your computer using that software license only. Okay, great. So, given the time frame, so I'm requesting our faculty member, Professor Guru Prasad, he's having one question. Uh, good morning, sir. Hi, good morning. Hello. Actually, I have. I, I just want to ask a couple of questions only, only two. Both are related. Are there uh, wireless sensors used to identify corrosion or corrosion activity in the bridge? That is wireless. That is the first question. And what are the type of wireless temperature and strain sensors for measuring temperature and strains uh, that is in the wireless mode that is uh, installed at bridges for structural health monitoring? So I'll, I'll answer the second question first. The initiation again from the lecture was with a strain sensor only, where we have uh, actually demonstrated a strain sensor. We are not using vibrating wire. As you can see, we are using foil strain gauges because I believe these are better for uh, live monitoring. The vibrating wire is has to have a lower sampling and it becomes very difficult for us to capture the even minute information with the vibrating wire. So we are using wireless strain sensors with foil strain gauges. This is for concrete, whereas this here is for steel. So depending on the structure, what you are measuring, if you want to measure on the truss girders or the truss of a steel bridge, this is the strain sensor in solid and steel. But as this can be directly PL60, nothing but the TML Japan PL60 strain gauge measure. that can be installed concrete. We have connected to our wireless. Now these strain gauges which you are using are electrical strain gauges of 350 ohms. Yes, that's correct. 350 or 120 ohms, sir? These are 350 ohms, sir. 350 ohms, okay. Yeah. And they are uh, from TML, from TML Japan. Yes. So we do not manufacture strain sensors. We are manufacturer of wireless nodes. So we can oh, connect any... Nodes. Okay. Yes. 
we can connect whether TMLs or whether it is the DM technologies or any HBM sensor with our nodes, irrespective of the manufacturer. So that is, yeah. we can always connect with it. Yeah. Regarding corrosion. corrosion. Yes. Uh, corrosion sensors, again, we do not manufacture by ourselves. We have our associates from Denmark, Host Technology, that uh, we basically are distributed for corrosion sensors. They cannot be completely wireless. They can be hybrid. What you have to do is, once you have installed that cathode and anode into concrete connected to a reinforcement bar, you have to bring the cables out and connect it to an ammeter. So that ammeter will have a continuous bus cable coming to the ammeter from that. I'll, I'll share an image with you. But that can be made wireless once it comes out of the concrete. So it's more like a hybrid uh, system that we call it. It is a partially wired system. So the from the ammeter you you pick up the signal that is nothing but the yeah, current. Yeah, electrical. Yes, exactly. The current we measure. The current and the and voltage. Yes. The current the or current, the voltage also. The information from the ammeters I have not personally used it, but what is there I'll share that with you. What I believe is the ammeter readings in current that goes into our central system, and if there is any jump in the current readings, we basically connect it to the corrosion information. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. Thank you. So one more question from uh, Professor Sridhar. Yes. Hello, uh, yeah, hi, Dr. Motwani. Uh, yes. uh, nice presentation and a lot of bit of understanding for us on the use of sensor and structural health monitoring. First of all, I should say that firmly. Uh, my simple question is, uh, did you guys ever use these sensors in uh, monitoring uh, settlements of tall structures, especially in the Singapore area? Uh, because I guess uh, most of the area in Singapore where new structures are coming up, uh, what I read in the articles is uh, reclaimed land and consolidating soils. That is first yes. question part of that. The other two sub questions what I have is related to sensors themselves. Uh, point number one uh, is how reliable are these sensors and how accurately you will get the uh, data out of the sensors. Uh, what I mean by reliable uh, of the sensors I mean uh, I expect uh, sometimes at least uh, these sensors would malfunction. And uh, if that is so, then uh, how do you uh, rectify and then how do you go to the field, replace them again and all that. So did you get uh, such an experience uh, while doing some of the uh, projects, uh, what you executed and you showcased as case studies? Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, so regarding the malfunctioning, yes, these are mechanical devices. Typically, we do not observe such uh, damage because there's a IP65 protected. Generally, if there is an intentional damage or a battery replacement is required, then yes, immediately our system has a, a, a automatic alarm system in which if there is any stoppage of data from any of the sensor, we get a direct email notification that the sensor has stopped transmitting. Now, to rectify the problem, obviously, we have been to the site, but it, it's mostly a minor minor issue with the batteries. Otherwise, these are very robust sensors and they have performed since last eight years. So the, in the market, we have active monitoring being done since last eight years of sensors. So reliability wise, they can I can only claim the reliability for the time period it is being used and that is eight years of data. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I had the other part of the question. Oh yes, the settlement. We haven't I, measured, I, yes. I, I, Yes, sir. We have we haven't measured settlement directly, but we have installed some of our tilt meters right at the at the, at the pile cap level. So those basically has uh, it's a similar it's it's a similar concept of uh, how to put it the bubble tube concept. So these these tilt meters have a VR liquid inside it that is finally connected to an electrode and that makes the circuit complete. So that if you have it installed like this that wear liquid is straight and any tilt caused due to the settlement of the foundation is recorded by a tilt meter. So, so to answer you straight, we haven't measured directly any settlement, but we are indirectly measuring the uh, result of the settlement onto the pier that results into tilting of the piers. Okay, so I got it. So most of the applications are related to directly mounting those sensors into the structural stream uh, rather yeah. than getting into the Below the ground level. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, thank you. 
No problem. Below the ground level, mostly our reinforcement strain monitoring system is there, but we are not doing any settlement monitoring as, okay. uh, as of now. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so as we're running out of the time, yeah. So this concludes the uh, the technical session. The next is what are plans? So first of all, uh, Dr. Motwani, thank you very much for accepting our uh, invitation as well as uh, uh, delivering a wonderful discussions. So on behalf of entire RIT community, students, staff, faculty, and the management. So I'm very much thankful to you for your wonderful presentation. As we discussed over the time, so you agree to come over here for a one-to-one -one interaction with the students, faculty, and staff. So probably uh, next month, so we'll have a one-day workshop at RIT campus. So we'll have a one-day workshop where we'll definitely utilize your complete uh, day uh, where we can expect a lot of question answers, even uh, if possible, you know, it will be not under uh, civil department, it will be under RIT uh, all the departments. So here sure. we can have a major interaction with uh, you and then the staff members. Now. So probably we will uh, schedule it next month uh, in May, second week, somewhere, whenever you are free. Sure. So this is what we, uh, we discussed and you tentatively you accepted for that. And finally, you know, so thanks to audience, thanks to students, faculty and all for joining the session. So thank you very much. The next session is at two o'clock, the second session and third session is at three o'clock. So thank you very much. Do care of, take care of your health. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking to you all. I have dropped the email ID and contact number. If you have any queries, please, please feel free to connect. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Bye. Okay. Great.